Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for checking out the video for the new. My layout for this ball is five and a quarter by four and a half by five. So it's a pin pretty low. Wanted to try something a little different and uh, see what it'd be like. So far, I uh, thrown a few warm up shots here. It looks pretty good. So let's get on the lanes at Super Bowl Lanes here in Windsor and check it out and see what happens. So we're bowling on 40 foot medium house shot. Normally this center hooks quite a bit, so we'll see what happens. Pretty good start. Now I really liked the original gem, so I'm hoping that this ball is just a build off that. It doesn't look overly angular, and that's kind of what I was hoping with this layout on it. So we'll see, uh, we'll compare it here. I got an original gem and an RSTX2 to kind of compare it and see up against another pearl in the same line and uh, against the ball with the same core. So that one got down the lane a little longer than I wanted to, but still got through it, still got around the corner. Probably gonna have to slow the next one down a little bit just to give it a little more time to shape, be a little rounder. But overall, so far I'm liking what I see out of this ball. Now, I'm not a huge fan a lot of times of asymmetric pearls. A lot of times they kind of stand up and quit on me. So if I can find one that I can do multiple things with, that's when I know I found pretty good ball. So I'm going to try and be a little slower, roll a little more. I got that in and it still carried. Like I've got away with a couple not so good shots. So let's uh, take our Joe Pro thumb out, switch it over to the gem and just see how much drastic difference there is, or if there is a drastic difference. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna start with, I'm gonna go uh, the same line with the gem, and then we'll move as we have to. So that was pretty close, but honestly, it was just a little too slow. I think I got to get it to the dry a little sooner with the more surface and the, the solid cover on the gem. It just kind of rolled and puked from that spot. So we'll, uh, we'll go a little bit left, a little slower, feed it to the dry. And one thing about the gem is when you open up a lane with it, it does still tend to get around the corner and go through the pins pretty good, even though it's got the big strong core and cover combination on it. So I'm gonna go three left. That was a pretty good shot. Like I say, got it dry and it just rolls off it. It doesn't go dead sideways off of it. That's what's nice about the gem. I feel like it's a pretty versatile, big asymmetric ball. I've used it a lot on short patterns, higher volume, and then I've used it on a lot of long stuff too. So it's a ball that I tend to bring with me a lot of different places. Between this and the Proton Physics, those are my, my go-to bigger number one ball in my bag. So I'm gonna go two more, just because that one was a little high. Might have been too many. Have an RST X1 here as well, or X2 rather, sorry. So let's compare it to that and see what the difference is. Now, I would expect the X2 to be cleaner than both the gem and the exotic gem. Probably a little more definition down lane. 
just with the weaker cover, weaker core combination. So again, we'll start where we were with the exotic gem and then see what our move's gonna be. Oh yeah, significantly cleaner cover on that ball. Gets down the lane a lot longer. And then it just got behind the head pin and never gonna carry that 7.10 out of there. So let's go, let's go two and one right. See if we can uh, get the ball to go through the pins a little better with this ball. That was a lot better shot. And that's what I like about that X2. It is super clean, but it's still not, it's not a boomerang off the end of the pattern. It controls the down lane motion a lot. A lot of people use it on harder patterns when they, they have to get a ball through the front, but they still need the asymmetric core to stabilize it down lane. When the symmetric stuff just wants to go to the left too hard. So let's throw one more with that. And then we'll get back into the exotic. Again, two right of where I was with the exotic. A little to the right, missed, but ball retains enough energy. Throw a bird dog. If I was bowling and uh, I saw that, I'd probably go another one right just to get it to go through the pins a little more flush. I like fancy flat tens, but uh, they aren't always the best for score. They just really look cool. If you can get away with one once in a while, I guess it's all right. So back to the exotic. I'm gonna straighten up and try and go a little bit straighter with it. And see what it does from a little bit uh, straighter angle. Rolling my hand off the back of it. So that was pretty close. It still responded to it really strong when it saw it. That cover on that ball is super strong. So when it sees friction, it wants to hook. Go two left off that last shot, which will be about five to the right of where I started with it originally. Again, trying to just roll the back of it, be nice to it, get it going forward. Not quite the reaction shape I'd want to see. It kind of stood and stopped. And that's the reaction I don't want to see with an asymmetric roll. So to me, that's just saying there's a bit too much of a cliff on this pattern. It's a little too dry to the right. So when I feed it there quickly, it just stands up and goes forward. If it was a little more blended, a little flatter pattern, that would actually probably look pretty good. But on the house shot, moving left is generally going to be the better play for somebody with uh, with a heavier hand. So now let's go the opposite way. I'm going to go five left of where I started with it. Soften up and try and round it. I mean, if I hit the head pin, I seem to strike with this ball. They don't look good, but they're striking. I missed left on that, got in the puddle. It's just never gonna hook from there. So we'll try that one more time. Feed it to the right a little bit sooner. See how much shape we can create with it. See if it'll go through the pins still when we do it. All right, I'm gonna try and get it to the right a little farther this time. I mean, we're just gonna throw messengers with everything today, apparently. Turn the cameras on and I throw messengers. I should start carrying them with me more often because I never get this many outside of this. So as you can see, there's just not quite enough cover to me to be playing that much of an angle with it. 
So let's go back one more. Where we start with it. Normal hand position, normal speed, and just make a good shot. All right, that was close. We'll throw one more. Don't want to end on that. Flat tens aren't our friend. So we'll make one more good shot. If you guys like the video, make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. We have some new things coming to the channel this year. I'm gonna try and expand on some of the things we're doing. We have vlog channels going up on, uh, on another channel, so make sure you follow Kurt Ridgewell. He helps me with all the video editing for our channel, so make sure you check out his vlogs or uh, see us at tournaments and what we're doing on the road. That's better. That wraps it up, guys. Thanks. That was the exotic gem. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn your notification bells, and we'll see you in the next video.